welcome back guys and girls to another episode of dad's toy garage and uh, we're working on something a little smaller today this little guy here it's a 1968 Hot Wheels custom Camaro in the light blue color and uh, the color apparently is pretty rare which I didn't know I bought it because the cowl was missing and the hood was missing and I attempt to replace that cowl in this episode and we restore it as you see it here um, I'm pretty excited of how it's turned out. It looks gorgeous and it was a fun little project. I don't do these episodes very often. The restoration of Hot Wheels, I just kind of do it when I feel like having a fun little side project and kind of get a little bit of enjoyment out of the end result. So I'll show you guys in a minute what this car looked like when I bought it. But uh, have a close look at this thing. We'll get you in there and let's have some fun with the build. So here is today's project, uh, 1968 Hot Wheels Camaro. As you can see, it's missing its hood and its cowl. And the cowl is something that will be, I guess, the most challenging part to tackle on here. But uh, you can see it's also a US casting. It's got the dull wheels on it and the Windex blue, which uh, my research says that's a harder to find color. So I've got a couple items for this build got the right set of wheels and tires for a US car a new hood from Redline Shop uh, these are also from the Redline Shop then I've got the Windex Blue Spectra Flame and the Hardener uh, something else I bought this car here for parts donor it is a nice car but I want to throw these set of wheels on another car that you'll see in a future episode what I can use off of this one I'm thinking is the cowl the shape is almost the same between the two. This car is, is a bit wider, but it should work. Um, and I did try something earlier in the shop. You can see that car is shot. Um, what I started first with, I thought I could maybe solder on this casting here. But after doing this, it's not worth it. You gotta get this metal so, or metal so hot that it will either bubble before the solder adheres to it or when it's at the bubbling point it's also ready to just fall apart and melt that all I did was touch this with the screwdriver and it just folded over like that so this was my test car so solder is not going to work so we're going to have to resort to getting a really close fit and gluing it in place and working with it at that point it'll be a learning curve for me so uh, at this point I'm just going to go through a couple pictures. I've got my reference photos of this car so we'll take a look at those right away. When you're working underneath the car here uh, what you want to do is drill these out till they're just level with the car and the mushroomed part is gone then you want to pull the casting apart and go with a smaller drill bit just to fit the rivets so we're going to do that now so the rivets are drilled out this drill bit that just fits in there uh, but they're not enough to fit the little rivets in but it's enough to do this so you can get the the base off the body and the interior and the windshield so these parts are all good yet except we got to build a cowl into here that'll be a bit of a process so here's the brand new sp um, redline shop hood on the car and the repair will be a little bit easier because the stud on this side is still intact or the the clamping system it's just this side that's broken off and then so then we got this car now we've drilled it apart the 67's windshield and this windshield other thing we got to do on this casting is the roof is slightly the pillar is a little bit bent so we got to be very carefully push that back without breaking it the windshield frame and roof is straightened out I ended up turning the car on its side and it turns out that that pillar is level and that was the one that wasn't damaged so if they sit level like that then I knew I had it but then it was in this area here was bent so the next thing I did I turned it upside down and I kind of held it slightly off the ground like this with the front nose touching and very gently took a plastic knife tip 
and put it up in there and that straightened out the car. So in order to mount the mushroom headed rivets into here, you have to drill out inside the center of the post, which is exactly um, what I've done here. I have cut up this car. I have a cowl that I'm going to try and get to work in here. And it still needs to be trimmed, but the shape is very close. This is my progress so far on the cowl that was broken and missing. I'm still trying to color match. I thought I had Windex Blue here. So I ordered the Windex Blue Spectra Flame. Windex Blue Spectra Flame is a little bit darker. So I'm thinking I might order Ice Blue and do a test with the Ice Blue. And if the Ice Blue is pretty close, we'll go with that. Maybe I'll add a little bit of Windex just to tint it if need to be. I want to try something here uh, with the engine bay. It's kind of got that white rust I think they call it and I want to try just using some vinegar on there and a toothbrush to see if we can get it cleaned up because polishing that is going to be a bear so we'll give this a shot. So we got the old wheels on our chassis we're going to try and take them off and I've heard that when you pull them you can pull the axle uh, bearings off so I'm going to just try cutting them off. I got the wheels off the chassis we were able to save the bearings so I just used my nippers for that and I'm going to try soaking this in vinegar as well. It seems to be working okay here. This engine is starting to come clean. It also takes off, it seems to take off the oxidization or the toning, depending on what you want to call it, uh, off the casting. So that cleans it up quite nice. So out of the vinegar now, I've neutralized it with water. Didn't damage the bearings. And all the white, um, white rust is gone, it looks like. Uh, it also cleaned up the casting a lot. So back to the toothbrush. I just dipped a little bit in here and then into the engine bay because there's no way I can get a rag in there. And I just just brush it in there. Scrub, scrub. And you can see it's actually working because the color is of the polish is turning gray and that means it's taking the oxidization off. There is the engine. It came out really good. Use a combination of toothbrush, uh, microfiber rag, and toothpick. I'm gonna work at Mother's Magna Loom Polish on the chassis now and see if we can get a little bit cleaner. And the chassis is now polished up using Mother's Magna Aluminum Polish with the combination again of the toothbrush and the microfiber rag. And it looks really good. So we're gonna have to spray paint the tail panel and the grill and put the wheels on and then this piece is done. So I've masked the floor pan off and I painted the tail panel and the grill with uh, some trim clad semi gloss black and then I scratched the tail lights off and I'm going to paint some insignia red on there now. Tail lights are now done. They'll dry semi gloss and I've uh, cleaned off the rear gas cap and now it's time to put the wheels on. The wheels are on, the underside's polished, the grill's painted, and the tail panel's done. I've stripped the body of the car except the roof because the roof is still going to have my color match but I wanted the paint off of this area here so I could do the cowl repair. A part of that will be polishing up this casting and making the hood uh, sit in place. As you can see, it's pretty good actually, I think. But yeah, that, that should come out nice. So I had this car in a vinegar bath um, with a toothbrush and all the toning that was on there is now gone. Uh, so the next thing I do is a little bit of polish on this car. Um, I might work a little bit at the bottom side here yet but if you're wondering how to get rid of toning without over polishing the casting that would be one way to do it. I'll probably give it a pretty good polish so I like my Spectre Flame paint jobs to really have some pop to it. So there you go. It's uh, another way to do it if you don't have a vibrating polisher. And of course you want to neutralize that with a little bit of water after before you run it with full of polish. So I have taken and uh, actually took some water and 600 grit sandpaper really just little pieces at a time and I 
first I filed down you can see the file there all the casting marks that are on the edges here I wanted I figured this car is being half rebuilt anyways with the cal I'm gonna make tr make her look real good I figure why not as a comparison and you can see this side how it's kind of rough and whatnot um, I've already filed it down but this one's gonna be a real beauty when it's done you gotta be careful you don't go through I believe there's um, plating on top of here so we'll keep working at this so here you can see I have sanded out the imperfections and it's time to polish up the car so for polishing um, I buy the larger microfiber eggs and I just have cut them into smaller squares so I got one for polishing one for cleaning um, and since I got to do work on the cowl here it will tarnish a little bit you can see I've started here and just from the fingerprints uh, but it'll buff up easy again I want to make sure I got everything where I need it to be and then when I start the cowl we'll do that and then we'll repolish the whole car so there's the polish job it is done um, at this point we'll come back to it we're gonna need, need to by the time I'm done modifying but it's gonna look gorgeous when it's done so now that I've gone over the car I'm gonna have to do some sanding to this redline shop hood we'll get her up perfect as well so here is my hood I've got it all polished up I've sanded out most of the imperfections it is definitely a softer metal like the instructions say um, so the scratches do want to stay in there I'm gonna have to play with that a little bit yet but I think now we can start working on our cowl and mounting this hood so I have a theory here uh, it involves a candle wax and like I said in the start of this video only one of my post holes in this casting was broken that side's good that side's not you can see that so I'm thinking if I put wax on the post here and put it in the body then put JB weld underneath we will be good to roll and this hood should open and close got the cowl polished up I'm gonna sand the back side and then we're gonna glue it into place I've now set up the car for the cowl I have the glass taped in place with the interior and the cowl is sitting on there I think what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of schmertz or a JB weld on the inside of the casting the tape will help hold it in place when that dries then I'll reinforce it with a little bit more JB weld and underneath I've taped everything that I don't want the JB weld to hold into the car the cowl has now been mounted I use JB weld the back side there you can see the repair and the hood opens nicely um, the wax did work really well so it looks a little messy in there but you won't see it once it's all put together and that's really the only way I can get strength into it but yeah the hood still opens it's great the cowl repair is staying and it's awesome I'm happy about that we got a bit of build up in there just to make sure and it clears the interior so that makes me a happy camper I have this 65 Mustang casting I'm gonna I polished up I'm gonna use it as a test to see how close red lines paint is to the blue on my car see if I can come up with a match so this color here turned out too dark um, it looks great though I like the color so that car will be good, put back together at some point I guess what I've done to figure out my mixture I did Windex two parts to the one and a half parts ice blue Windex gives it a little bit of the green shade is in there and this will give it more of the blue but that was still too dark so I needed to add uh, a smidge of this I guess and then five parts of this and then uh, the hardener as well so I did 15 parts because I did a little bit of a, a bigger mixture in that cup and a little tip I have some lacquer thinner you could use gun wash whatever the tip is in there the air cap and I brushed the needle because it's got to sip uh, 10 minutes between coats and I was finding it was starting to speckle spray which means it's drying in there there's second tack coat that color is looking pretty close to what I had on there I think that'll work and we're gonna start putting some shiny coats down and I'm gonna set uh, 
10 minutes between coats I guess so here's the car I got all painted it was two tack coats and one shine coat um, the replacement hoods will leave it a little bit darker you probably wouldn't see it if it wasn't such a light color the other thing I forgot to mention was where I did the cowl uh, you can still see the lines there but you, there's a little bit of glue so I just took the silver spray and sprayed that down um, this is making the color look a little bit more blue out in this light like purpley blue what I would do next time to do this color um, I would add probably twice as much clear so when I lay the shine down it doesn't get quite so dark and you see more of the metal but learn as you go right um, it looks great though it'll look good in my collection so I think you can see a slight color difference there this one had a little bit more turquoise to it but it was like pretty much in between the two colors that Redline shop was selling so we did the mix on there and, and this is apparently I didn't realize when I bought it. I just bought it because I wanted the Camaro and it was missing the cowl so it was cheap apparently this light blue color like this is a highly rare like super hard to find car if you look on the rarity list for colors so that's kind of exciting to have that here are the parts of the car uh, the interior which is this color uh, I would say kind of a brownish gray silvery the glass which is clear I think or whatever color the US car came with my lighting's a little low here um, the chassis which I polished already the body and the two rivets here so we're gonna flip the body over and we'll throw the glass and the interior into there in there and there's these two little stubs on the floor they go in here so we'll do a little test fit it's great and the rivets have you can see how they're machined a little bit I turned them in a drill just so it looked original and I've drilled these holes out and the little stubs they fit into the holes in there so we're gonna put a bit of JB weld on the back side of this floor and a little bit in the hole and I'm just using JB Weld six minute setup so I've just dabbed a little bit with a toothpick onto each stud make sure your hands don't have any JB Weld on there you don't really want that on the top of your car I'm just gonna drop the floor into there the chassis and I'm gonna put my studs into there once I've pressed it down I've wiped it clean now what you're seeing there is just a little bit of oxidization or whatever you call it toning so both rivets are on you make sure you wipe the J excess JB weld out of there now it's gonna sit up for a bit and the car will be done so I got the car in the lineup of my cars alongside the other two I've restored got a bit of a custom here and here's my one-to-one -one. I think that's the color that'll go on the actual car I'm very happy with how it's turned out um, that one did have the damaged cowl on it and I replaced it to the best of my ability custom mix that color so we'll put it out of the lineup and you guys can have a little bit of a look at it up against its sibling here joining me guys and girls on another episode of the toy shop on dad's toy garage channel and this thing turned out awesome I'm excited with the end result of it I'm not sure if you guys appreciate this style of video or not but I'll do them once in a while here and there um, it's kind of fun especially seeing something 52 years old uh, turn out like it's brand new again so 
Uh, we'll do more of these in the future. You'll see more of them pop up. But next time we'll be back on one of the real full-size cars. So until next time, we'll talk to you later.